All right, all right. So a couple times now I've promised that I would go through, do kind of a walkthrough of the changes and equipment I've made to the 220. This is the 220 for those of you who don't know. It is currently empty. I've been cycling it for the last couple of weeks. It is now fully cycled. So I'm just basically keeping bacteria until the new fish arrive. So stay tuned for all that. But while it was down, took everything out, deep cleaned it, deep cleaned the sand and made a few changes that I'm going to go over here. So first thing, and guys, this is a standard. If you've never seen this before, oh, lost focus. Never seen this before. Um, this is a standard. It's a Marineland 220. It's on an Aquion standard six foot pine canopy. Same one you would have like for a 180 as well. And then I have a canopy that I've taken off uh, for right now for the purposes of this video that I made myself. There's a build video on that if you're interested. So let me get down here. So the first things first, and you're going to see a bunch of craziness in there, but um, I added some under, oops, added some under cabinet lighting. So that's just right up here. You can flip that on and off, which I know is something that, you know, a lot of people have. It's not a huge deal. They're just uh, some little lights from Ikea, but really nice to have that. Should have done that a long time ago. Um, and those are plugged in. I took a bunch of stuff uh, that I've been using in the basement and put it up here. So um, I have these really long power strips. They have some absurd number of outlets on them. I think like 12. They're from Harbor Freight. Um, they, they work really well. I've actually got two of them. There's one along the back and then there's one kind of up that we can't see um, on the front as well. And what's nice about those and especially what's nice about having two of them. Uh, it, well, one, I have more outlets than I'll ever need. And two, I, I always recommend, if you can, having two different power strips underneath your tank, even if it's a small tank, because that allows you, like for instance, if I'm doing a water change, I've got everything that I would want to turn off during a water change, so that's filters and heaters, they're all plugged into this front power strip. So if I'm doing a water change, I just flip that off. The back one, which has lights um, and some other stuff in it, that stays, uh, keeps power, which is nice. Um, and then those two power strips go over here, and I'll explain, there's a bunch of stuff going on over here that I'll explain in a minute, but I brought my big battery backup that had been running the fish room downstairs. I brought that up here. Um, there's usually like some uh, shelves that sit in front of this that have toys for the kids and stuff, but I moved that for this. So this just sits back there, um, but it's very nice. And I only have one of those um, power strips plugged into the actual battery backup part. The other's just into the like regular surge protector part, um, which is really not a big deal. And then I went ahead and threw my kilowatt meter, and you can't really see it too well because there's tubing in the way, but uh, I threw that on here with the battery backup plugged into it just so I can kind of keep a good um, you know, just a good eye on how much this tank is costing me. It's kind of nice that way. Okay, so that's all the power. You may remember on this tank I had, uh, I actually had four filters originally. I had um, a Fluval FX5, which I still have. I had an Eheim 2260, which is a very large basically Eheim's equivalent to the FX5, FX6. And then I had two smaller Eheim uh, 2217s. And each of those uh, was pumping through an external heater enclosure, PVC, that I made myself and did a video about. And when I kind of sat back and wanted to redo the tank, I wanted to just get it down to three filters. So now and, and I actually had uh, an FX6 that I could dedicate to this. So now I have an FX5, an FX6 over here, and then in the middle is an FX4. And this FX4 now runs, I built a new external heater controller, or I'm sorry, an external uh, heater enclosure back there. You can kind of see it, it's fairly straightforward. Um, it's basically just a double version of the one I built before. So this FX4, the output 
goes through that into that part at the top there. And there's two Eheim uh, Jaeger heaters or Jaeger or whatever, however you pronounce it. Two 300 watt heaters. The water goes through those and out that center middle at the back and then up into the tank. And what's nice about that, if you've never seen those before, is one, it just gets your heaters out of your tank, which I just like to have as, as few things uh, actually inside the tank as I can get away with. And then two, um, I feel like it distributes the heat a little better. Instead of waiting for the water to flow past the heater, it's flowing water directly past the heater in those and pumping it out throughout the tank, which is kind of cool. So um, that is what's going on with the heaters. And I'm really happy with, and I might do a video later about what's inside these uh, canisters, but I'm just really happy with having only the three. They're all Fluvols. They're all beasts. Um, they all work really well. And I really tried to make my media nice and tidy in there. Um, I've got all my biomedia in bags, which I had some of it in bags before, but now it's all, um, it's all Seachem. Oh, what is that stuff? Matrix? It's the Seachem biomedia, and it's all in bags, and can all just be easily uh, taken out and rinsed when I clean these filters. So I'm just going for ease of use on every single thing um, going on with this tank. Oh, and then those heaters, um, if you've never seen these before, they're awesome, and I'll link to them. I'll try and remember to link to all this stuff down in the description. Um, this thing you see hanging back here is my external heater controller. So both of those Eheims go into that. I set the temperature on that and then it controls the actual temperature in the tank. The Eheims are both set to a higher temperature so that when it the controller tells them to kick on sorry it's like not sure what to focus on right now. When uh, when it kicks on it just kicks on both those heaters. Just uh, another nice kind of thing and it has a temperature probe you can maybe kind of see, yeah, you, know, you can't really see it too well. It's hanging down there in the back of the tank. All right, so that's really it for underneath the tank. Um, the one other thing is I have a water alarm down there that just sits there. So um, if water contacts it, it makes a, an absurdly loud noise. Okay, and then there's there's some other piping back there that I'll talk about. Um, okay, so one thing with water changes that I'm really trying to do with this tank is, and I've had it easy, pretty easy before. I've had an auto water change system that pushes water into the tank. I have it change overnight and then it overflows. There's a big overflow box back here in this corner that you can kind of see and that's what it looks like on the back. And it just goes, there's a tube that runs down. That's what, that's what this tube is right here, this dirty one. This dirty one, that's from that. So it just flows downstairs to the basement to my drain, okay? Well, that's great, it changes water overnight. Um, it displaces water though, so it's not a perfect water change. And I'm gonna possibly work on a system where I have a little pump in here that pumps water out the overflow for, I don't know, however long it takes, however much water I wanna change, if it's 10, 20 minutes, right before the actual auto water change kicks in. Um, just to make that a little more efficient. However, if I want to do like a big water change on this tank, I just wanted to make it as easy as possible. So what I have over here, and it almost looks just like, in that back corner there, it just looks like a filter intake, right? And it essentially is. I mean, it's a tube. Um, it's been plasti dipped black. Um, it's just sitting there. But that's just like a permanent overflow, okay? So what I can do is come back here. I've got a ball valve on it. And if I turn this, I don't know if you can hear it, but it starts draining the tank. I ran a line, a big line, a one inch tubing line down to my drain in the basement. So if I open that, it just starts draining. And frankly, it goes pretty fast. Like you can see, it's already starting to drain just while I'm standing here. And this is a 220, right? So it's a big footprint just already starting to drain. Well, that wasn't quite good enough for me. So I did another thing. I took this, I put a pump, I'm gonna turn the light back on. This isn't the easiest logistical video for you to see everything, but 
Um, back in here in this corner, I actually put a 1600 gallon per hour pump. It used to be on my grow out system. And I just went ahead and put that puppy on a remote trigger. So I can just hit this, see I've got this, um, this little keychain remote. I just hit that, the pump kicks on, and it goes even faster. So it just starts flying and pumping water extremely fast. Like, it's almost unsettling how fast this starts to drain. I'm going to go ahead and stop it. Um, but yeah, it's crazy. Actually, you know what? I'm going to run it for just another minute because I want to show you one more thing. Um, and these filters are on. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the filters off. This is what I'm talking about. So I can just turn them off super easy. So it's it's flying. I mean, it's draining super, super quick. Now, it's nice. I don't have to run a hose. I mean, I can, of course, if I want to drain this tank like really far, I can always run my python over here. Um, and it's not like it's that big of a deal. But I wanted to not do that if I could help it. So I also ran, you know, I've got that drips uh, the auto water change system downstairs it is a permanent water line connected to three very large um, water filters that take out all the chlorine and all the fine particles so i just ran a line off of that and directly up here to the tank so if i want and you can see there's like a little i just put a an elbow on the end of it so it's not blasting down directly into the tank so if I stop this, I'm going to stop the pump, turn this off so it's not draining anymore. If I want to start that, I just come over here. You can see both these lines. And I just turn this, and my fill starts. Now, it's not super quick, because it's going through those filters. If it gets to a point where I'm tired of waiting on this thing, I may just run one up here that's unfiltered, uh, just so it's faster, and I'll just add, you know, Seachem Safe or whatever. But in this case, it's really nice because it's just boom, filtered water, kind of on demand, to fill this puppy back up whenever I want. So that was very long-winded, but I think that's all the changes that I made for now. Like I said, I need to work on a little bit of a pump to drain some water before I do the water changes overnight. But yeah, I'm really happy with um, a lot of these things. I think the tank is going to look... The dog is... I gave the dog something so that he would uh, be quiet, but he's done with that now, so he's going to bark. But I'm almost done. Um, anyways, I think the tank is going to look great. I think it's going to be really easy to maintain, and that was the whole goal, so... Hope you guys dig all this stuff. It's just really the most nerdy of aquarium nerd stuff, but that's pretty much why you guys tune in. So anyways, hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, thanks for watching and have a good one.